Today, we are focusing on another issue that is plaguing West Asia, and that's climate change. Millions in Syria and Iraq are facing water shortages as the region's longest river, the Euphrates, dries up. Just moments ago, chilling groans and the clanging of chains echoed from a newly uncovered cave beneath the Euphrates River. The paranormal entities inside led the community to seal it off permanently. However, recent explorers have reopened it, only to regret their decision deeply. Could these terrifying noises be ancient aliens guarding secrets buried long ago? Join us as we investigate the cave's entity that could wipe out an entire civilization. The chilling echoes from the ancient depths, the Euphrates River, which starts in Turkey and flows through Syria and Iraq, was an essential water source over 10,000 years ago. However, recent drops in water levels have led to interesting discoveries. One notable discovery is a cave beneath the river. What's even more intriguing are the unsettling noises heard coming from within these caves. These caves have unusual shapes, resembling prison bars, which has led to discussions about whether they were formed naturally or made by humans. Some religious groups believe these sounds might be signs of doom as foretold in sacred texts, suggesting that evil forces might be unleashed, potentially leading to worldwide destruction. This idea has caused considerable concern and fascination among many people. Another significant find under the waters of the Euphrates is what some believe to be the tomb of King Gilgamesh, a ruler from the ancient city of Uruk based on the epic tale named after him. Known as a giant, Gilgamesh is said to have stood 17 feet tall. His realm was what is now modern-day Iraq. This story captures the imagination as in 2003, a group of archaeologists from Germany, led by the bold York Fassbinder, uncovered a tomb containing large skeletal remains. This sparked debate over whether these could be the remains of the legendary King Gilgamesh. Let's delve into the recent discoveries of King Gilgamesh, where is depicted as a dominant ruler and a warrior. His reign was marked by numerous battles and his harsh rule, prompting divine intervention. The gods sent Enkidu, a wild man, to confront him after hearing the complaints of his people. This encounter between Gilgamesh and Enkidu developed into a significant historical event, ultimately transforming their conflict into a friendship. Tragically, after Enkidu's Gilgamesh was overwhelmed by grief. This loss led him to ponder deeply about life's purpose and the value of human achievements. He even considered the possibility of overcoming death. Historically, the tale of Gilgamesh was regarded merely as a fictional story, not rooted in reality. However, a team of explorers, led by someone named Fassbinder, uncovered an expansive estate that aligned with the detailed descriptions found in the Epic of Gilgamesh, challenging previous assumptions about the story's authenticity. Further investigations revealed additional findings, yet there remains uncertainty about whether to continue exploring the area or seal it off. The question of what initially caused the site to be sealed remains unanswered, adding to the intrigue of the ongoing research. Regarding religious prophecies, the drying of the Euphrates River holds significant meaning in Islamic tradition. It is believed that this event will uncover hidden treasures, specifically a mountain of gold. These traditions, supported by numerous accounts handed down over generations, suggest the revelation of immense wealth that was once submerged under the river. On the other hand, discovering such wealth historically has led to conflict, power struggles, and societal disruption. The sudden emergence of gold reserves could disrupt economic systems, strain relationships between nations, and potentially lead to conflict, echoing historical patterns where newfound wealth has caused more problems than it solved. The Christian perspective also highlights prophecies regarding the Euphrates River, particularly in the Book of Revelation, which describes scenarios akin to apocalyptic films where the river's drying is a prelude to end-time events. 
It mentions kings advancing and angels released from their constraints to wreak havoc on the world. Recent unexpected drying events of the river and peculiar activities along its banks have sparked discussions and interpretations related to these biblical prophecies. Amid these discussions, archaeological finds in the Cave of Secrets have unveiled religious artifacts and ceremonial sites associated with the Zakiku people. These items offer insights into the religious practices and societal structures of ancient civilizations. Such findings are not only valuable for understanding historical cultures, but also contribute to the broader discussion of human history's complexity. Researchers have long been fascinated by the spiritual and religious beliefs of ancient civilizations, like those of the Zakiku people who held the Euphrates River in high regard. To these ancient societies, rivers were not just sources of water, but were considered sacred. They believed these water bodies were filled with life-giving energy and connected to divine forces. This view turned rivers into symbols of fertility and spiritual power. For the Zakiku, the Euphrates was more than just a river. It was a central element of their spirituality and community life. Near this revered river, there was a cave thought to be a place for connecting with divine entities and ancestors. This cave, due to its location and the artifacts found within it, is believed to have played a significant role in the religious practices of the Zakiku. These artifacts, which include figures used in rituals and other ceremonial objects, suggest that the cave was a site for important religious ceremonies. The walls of the cave, adorned with carvings, symbols and drawings, likely serve as a key to understanding the complex set of beliefs, rituals and traditions associated with the Euphrates. The river's supposed supernatural properties might have made it a destination for those seeking spiritual guidance or healing, with the cave acting as a central site for pilgrimage and religious ceremonies. Activities in the cave probably included prayers, offerings to the divine, and various purification rituals, with the cave's echoes enhancing the spiritual atmosphere and making the ceremonies feel more intense. As we leave the Euphrates, we dive into the secrets of the ancient city of Zakiku. Rediscovering a submerged empire, the Zakiku's respect for the Euphrates can be compared to the Hindus' respect for the Ganga River. Both are seen as vital, sacred forces in their respective cultures. Interest in the river and its archaeological sites continues to bring new findings to light, deepening our understanding of the past. In more recent times, the Euphrates has revealed objects from various historical periods, including those of the Sumerians, Assyrians, Greeks, Byzantines, and Muslims. A severe drought in Iraq led to an unexpected discovery when Kurdish authorities drained a part of a reservoir to save their crops. This action uncovered an ancient city submerged under the Euphrates for over 3,400 years. Thought to be a key urban center of the ancient Matan Empire, which once competed with Egypt, this city's exposure provided significant insights into the interconnectedness of the ancient world. As the reservoir filled back up, there was a rush to study and protect this newly discovered treasure, confirming its importance as a bustling center before its abandonment after the Assyrian takeover. The team carefully covered the excavation site with a tarp and added a layer of gravel, effectively hiding its historical contents. This action, while protective, also kept potentially valuable insights from future discovery. The drying up of the Euphrates River, essential for centuries, is now a significant problem. This river is shrinking due to poor water management, threatening the civilizations that depend on it. Historically, the Babylonians first manipulated the river, using its waters to ensure their city's growth and survival. The management of the river's water became a crucial topic after the Lausanne Treaty. Turkey and Iraq agreed in 1946 to try to regulate the river's flow. However, the construction of dams by Turkey, Syria and Iraq 
has drastically reduced the water available downstream, turning a once vibrant and full river into just a small stream. This change benefited upstream areas that enjoy economic growth and power generation from their dams, while downstream, countries like Iraq face severe water shortages. The tension reached a point where Syria, desperate for water, threatened to destroy its dam, prompting countries like Saudi Arabia and the Soviet Union to intervene and prevent a disaster. Despite these efforts, the main problems were not fixed. The ongoing drought and the continuous high demand for water are causing the river to shrink even more. The once mighty river, visible even from space, is now barely a stream, leading to failed crops and people fighting over access to clean water. Today, about 9 million people in Syria living near the river are facing a severe threat to their existence without any other options for water. Focus then shifted to another historical find, the ancient cave of Zakiku. Researchers exploring the newly discovered underwater city wondered if this could really be the center of the ancient Zakiku. This city was part of the large Mitanni Empire that extended from the Zagros Mountains to the Mediterranean Sea and was an important urban center in the region. However, the city's fortunes declined due to conflicts with the Egyptians who aimed to control Syria. A temporary peace was arranged by Pharaoh Thutmos IV, but the rise of the Assyrians eventually led to the downfall of the empire. As Assyrian power grew, Zakiku was abandoned and finally lost beneath the sea. This tale of environmental and political neglect serves as a reminder of the ongoing issues faced by the Euphrates River and its dependent civilizations, illustrating the lasting impact of human actions and environmental mismanagement. Archaeologists are carefully examining every piece of pottery, tool, and building they find in the old city of Zakiku. This place, buried under sand for centuries, is slowly being uncovered, revealing its hidden past. The discovery has excited both historians and archaeologists as they dig deeper into what life was like here many years ago. Each day in Zakiku is a detailed investigation. Specialists sift through the remains, learning about the social structures, economies, and lifestyles of the Zakiku people from the fragments they find. These tiny pieces, once part of everyday items, now help build a picture of ancient technology, habits, and skills. The findings aren't just random objects, they are clues to understanding a long-lost way of life. The tale of Zakiku begins with its life-giving river revealing a society both prosperous and intricate. The alien artifacts and tunnels of ancient Zakiku. Zakiku's location near the powerful Euphrates River is crucial. This river, essential for watering crops, supported a thriving agricultural community. Thanks to fertile land and good water management, the people of Zakiku enjoyed a prosperous economy and a rich cultural life. This setting allowed them to develop a society that was both complex and advanced for its time. Among the notable discoveries are pottery containers filled with cuneiform tablets. These tablets are key because they provide a direct connection to the everyday lives and governmental systems of the past. A seal found in these ruins belonged to Gimel Ninkarik, an important figure from the nearby town of Turka. This has sparked intense interest among historians who are eager to learn everything about his era, which stretches back to centuries before Christ. These writings, believed to be from his home, offer a glimpse not only into the lives of the wealthy, but also into the difficulties faced by the poor, including a young girl named Guadam. Olivier Rule, the team's expert on ancient writings, has been translating and sharing these findings giving us a clearer view of the challenges and successes of those ancient times. But there's more than just artifacts and writings. The recent recession of the Euphrates River has revealed an intricate network of tunnels. Previously hidden underwater and wrapped in local lore, these tunnels, complete with robust staircases, have puzzled many. Who built these and for what purpose? While some suggest mythical explanations involving biblical prophecies, a more likely theory 
ties these tunnels to historical uses in Babylon. The emergence of these tunnels proves their existence and links them to historical narratives about past empires, possibly even to the famed Queen Semiramis. This finding confirms what was previously only known through old texts and encourages us to reconsider our views on ancient construction and architectural skills. The strange noises coming from the caves under the Euphrates River have frightened the local people. Recently, one of these caves was closed because something unusual happened inside it. It might be a creature with features similar to fish or reptiles, with a huge mouth and a long tongue like a snake, which could easily swallow a person. Could this creature be causing the scary sounds? Or are there even more dangerous animals hiding deeper in the caves, waiting to emerge? In these dark and deep places, scientists have discovered old writings, carvings, and artworks on the walls. These discoveries are like doors to the past, showing us how people once lived and thought in these areas. It feels as though we're traveling back in time, stepping into the lives and emotions of people from long ago. These finds are very important because they help us understand parts of history that we didn't know before, and they give us a foundation for more research. Every piece of writing and every drawing, no matter where it's found, tells a part of a story. These old texts are full of information about everything, from the types of stories and methods of communication people use to the ways they use their minds in ancient times. Researchers are studying lists, legal decisions, and official records to learn about the political and economic systems of Zakiku. There's even more to find out from these texts. They help us see what everyday life, work, and the relationships between different groups of people in Zakiku were like. The religious writings and songs provide insights into the spiritual practices and beliefs of the ancient Zakakuyan people, showing us the gods they worshipped and the religious ideas that influenced their lives. The cave's artworks are especially revealing. They depict everyday scenes, mythological stories, and important events in great detail, telling us much about the city's cultural and artistic history. By studying these artworks, researchers can understand the tastes, symbolic meanings, and artistic methods of the people who lived in Zakiku long ago. The Fertile Crescent, often mentioned in history books, largely gained its significance due to the Euphrates River. Alongside the Tigris River, it hosted the earliest known civilizations in what is recognized today as ancient Mesopotamia. Imagine these two significant rivers, separated by a wide, flat plain, perfectly situated for the birth of civilizations. This area, known as Mesopotamia, which translates to the land between rivers, is a key segment of the larger Fertile Crescent. This crescent stretches impressively from the Persian Gulf to the Mediterranean Sea, marking a trail of early human development. It was here that the initial farming communities appeared, setting the groundwork for the advanced civilizations that would later develop. In Mesopotamia, smart farming created rich societies, laying the groundwork for cities that stood the test of time, the rise of Sumerian agriculture. The location was incredibly advantageous for the early inhabitants of Mesopotamia. The nearby mountains played a crucial role as they sent fertile soil, known as silt, into the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. Annually, these rivers would flood, dispersing their silt-filled waters across the plains, depositing a rich layer of soil ideal for farming. This yearly deposit of fertile soil was perfect for growing crops and supported the growth of prosperous communities. Yet depending too much on the rivers, was risky. Although the fertile silt allowed for abundant crops, the same floods that brought life could also bring destruction. These annual floods could destroy crops, homes, and even lives without warning. The very waters that sustained their agriculture could turn destructive, showing how delicate life was for these early civilizations. This constant give and take with nature was a defining factor in the lives of the people who lived in what was known as the Fertile Crescent. 
Entire communities were destroyed by massive floods, while the surrounding deserts faced severe droughts, causing plants to dry up and die. Despite these harsh conditions, the ancient Sumerians, who settled in Mesopotamia many years ago, managed to take control of this challenging environment and turn it into a productive agricultural area. How did they achieve this? They developed two revolutionary farming methods. First, they mastered the art of irrigation. During the scorching summer months, when the earth was dry and cracked, the Sumerians built a complex system of canals that stretched for miles. These canals carried water from the rivers directly to their fields, enabling them to grow crops far from the water's edge. Their second innovation was the plow. Before the plow, planting seeds was a grueling and inefficient task. The plow changed all that, making it easier and more effective to plant seeds. These agricultural breakthroughs did more than just improve farming. They transformed it. The ancient Sumerians, despite not having easy access to resources such as metal, wood and stone, transformed their fertile lands into thriving trade centers. These early city-states leveraged their surplus of agricultural products using carts with wheels and ships, with sails to trade far beyond their borders. They bartered their excess grain and wool for more valuable items, enriching their cities and establishing Mesopotamia as the starting point for some of the world's earliest civilizations. The significance of Mesopotamia, often called the cradle of civilization, endures because recent environmental changes have exposed long hidden clues about the Babylonians, helping historians piece together the region's history. The drying up of the Euphrates River has played a crucial role in this. Babylon depended on the Euphrates not just for watering crops, but also for supporting its urban population and infrastructure, which included buildings, pottery, and tablets with writings. Ongoing droughts pose challenges, but have also led to the discovery of archaeological finds that have been buried under riverbeds. Among these are exceptionally well-preserved ancient buildings and a large industrial area enclosed by thick walls and tall towers. These discoveries are remarkable, considering the age of the structures and the many years they were buried. They provide valuable insights into the advanced urban planning and the adaptive strategies of ancient societies in managing scarce natural resources. This deeper understanding shows how ancient civilizations not only survived, but thrived despite environmental and resource challenges. The ancient walls and towers that were recently discovered have been surprisingly well preserved, which is quite unexpected given their age. Alongside these, historians have unearthed a large multi-level storage building, robust in its construction, which likely played a crucial role in the life of the ancient community. It appears this facility was a central point for storing goods from various regions, notable not just for its size, but also for its state of preservation. The walls of the building, made from sun-dried mud, have lasted over 3,000 years. Despite surviving strong earthquakes that hit in 1350 BC, it is remarkable that these structures have not fallen apart long ago. The building remains strong, although the top sections of the walls are starting to crumble. It seems that the fallen pieces from these walls might have helped shield the lower parts of the walls from water damage. This find prompts questions about the strength of ancient building methods and the level of maintenance, or perhaps sheer chance, that has allowed these structures to remain until today. The fact that these historical remnants have managed to endure through centuries is a strong indication of the craftsmanship or maybe just good fortune of the ancient builders. The ability of these old structures to hold up against time and the elements is noteworthy, though it also makes one wonder about their future stability and longevity. This blend of resilience and fragility in ancient constructions is compelling, 
though it also brings a realistic perspective on the challenges they face against continuous environmental pressures. New finds along the Euphrates bring us face to face with the lives of ancient people echoing through time. From clay to stone. A recent excavation made significant discoveries, including five pottery jars that stood out among the findings. These jars were not just empty vessels, they contained over a hundred cuneiform tablets, some still wrapped in their original clay envelopes. It's remarkable how these clay tablets have survived for so many years, though it's somewhat expected given the durable nature of clay. These ancient tablets are crucial because they provide insights into the daily lives and historical context of the city's ancient residents. The narrative then shifts to a more somber historical event triggered by the construction of the Euphrates Dam in Syria in 1968. This construction resulted in the flooding of many archaeological sites, blending development with significant cultural loss. The creation of the dam was a move towards progress, but at the expense of valuable historical sites. However, the banks of the Euphrates River managed to safeguard remnants of ancient civilizations from total loss. As the water levels now recede and the lake clears, these previously submerged sites are re-emerging, showing glimpses of a past civilization. This re-exposure by the river highlights the ongoing conflict between modern development and the preservation of historical sites. Cemeteries whisper to us from the past, gently telling forgotten stories. Along the Euphrates River, there's a special place not many know about. It's full of old Christian monasteries and lots of graves. This area, now under the water of the Euphrates, draws the attention of people who study history and old things. They find it fascinating because it has a cemetery used by people from long ago. Once hidden underwater, the western district of Raqqa now shows its secrets. It's an incredible sight with old graves that hold not just bones, but stories of people and their families from many years ago. These graves are more than just resting places. They are like books full of stories waiting to be read. Because of this, people who study old things keep looking around these graves to find more items from the past. Their work helps us learn more about how people used to live, what they cared about, and how they dealt with life and death. Each grave offers a glimpse into the lives of individuals and families, stretching back generations. These finds are important because they help us connect with the past in a real way, making us realize how people long before us lived their lives. The search in and around these old burial sites is careful and thorough. The goal is to learn as much as possible without disturbing the peace of those who rest there. It's a delicate balance between learning from these ancient sites and respecting the dignity of the past. Every item found is treated with care, as it's not just an object, it's part of someone's life story. As historians and archaeologists continue to explore, they slowly uncover the layers of human history buried beneath the earth, each layer revealing more about our shared human path. As archaeologists explore the graves of ancient Homo erectus, it becomes evident that each excavation seems to uncover more uncertainties than clarities. The Euphrates River, historically recognized as the boundary dividing East and West, has significantly influenced human history through continuous wars, invasions, and the concentration of power. This river's role in shaping history is unmistakable, and it gains additional interest when linked to the early human activities traced back to the Homo erectus period. Well before current geopolitical boundaries were established, the Euphrates was a site of early human activity dating back to the era of Homo erectus. One could picture the scene of unearthing ancient bones and tools along the riverbanks, which directly connects the past to the present. In what is now Turkey, evidence of this ancient existence has come to light with the discovery of stone tools attributed to Julian and remains of Homo erectus found in Cocobus. These findings, while pivotal for scientific understanding, bring forth a slew of complex questions about the past, complicating the already intricate tapestry of human history.
the realization that these riverbanks were the bedrock for civilizations, now only remembered through archaeological finds, adds a layer of depth to the understanding of human resilience and adaptability. However, it also confronts scholars with the harsh truth that much of human history might merely be layers of sediment waiting to reveal stories that are not yet fully comprehensible or embraced. The ongoing excavations along the Euphrates do not just unearth the physical foundations of ancient societies, but also metaphorically delve into the core truths believed about human origins and the perceived linear progression of human civilization. These archaeological endeavors challenge the oversimplified views of human history, suggesting that the development of human societies was anything but straightforward. They hint at a complex network of human experiences, interactions and migrations that have faded over millennia, now gradually being brought to light through diligent archaeological efforts. Each artifact and bone discovered along the Euphrates adds a fragment to the puzzle of humanity's collective story, prompting a re-evaluation of known historical narratives about human origins and lifestyles. This path into the past not only enriches the collective understanding of human history, but also underscores the impermanence of civilizations and the lasting influence of natural landmarks like the Euphrates on the course of human events. As each layer of earth is carefully removed, it reveals not just the physical remnants of bygone eras, but also offers insights into the environmental and social dynamics that shaped the lives of ancient peoples. This process, while slow and meticulous, continues to paint a more comprehensive picture of how ancient communities thrived and interacted with their surroundings, offering valuable lessons for understanding both the past and the present. In Western Anatolia, a piece of a Homo erectus skull was found, believed to be about 1.1 million years old. This discovery offers us a glimpse into our distant past, illustrating the path our early ancestors made through time. The discoveries don't stop there. Deeper historical digs have led to the oldest Paleolithic site yet in Enders Uenlu, central Anatolia. The items found here are dated between 0.9 and 0.78 million years ago. These finds are important because they help us understand the early stages of human development when our ancestors were beginning to leave their mark on the world. Further exploration in southeast Turkey, near the Euphrates Valley in Birashik, has unearthed more items, adding pieces to our understanding of prehistory. Here, early humans, specifically Homo erectus, roamed the land. These early humans were not just roaming, they were pioneers of human evolution, walking upright and paving the way for future generations. Each site, from the fragments of bones to the rudimentary tools, does more than just add to our collection of historical artifacts. They challenge our understanding of how humans have managed to adapt and survive over millennia. To our collection of historical artifacts, they challenge our understanding of how humans have managed to adapt and survive over millennia. These archaeological findings are crucial for understanding the progression of human history. They tell a story of endurance, adaptation, and the unyielding passage of time that has witnessed the rise and fall of many species, with humans continuing to forge ahead. The study of these ancient sites and remains is not merely an academic pursuit, it is essential for piecing together the complex journey of human evolution, showing how our ancestors navigated the challenges of their environments to thrive on Earth. Our ancient relatives, the early humans, had distinct physical features such as broad foreheads, large noses, and strong jaws. These features were markedly different from those of modern humans. They were the first to discover how to use fire, a significant development that occurred about a million years ago. This breakthrough was crucial for human evolution, providing warmth, safety, and a 
new method to prepare food. Picture the challenging environments of prehistoric Turkey, where these early humans used basic stone tools to manage their daily survival needs. Their lives were not easy or serene. Instead, they faced constant challenges from nature and the limitations of their early tools. Each day demanded perseverance, and each night was a struggle against the cold and darkness, made slightly more bearable by their newfound control of fire. These early humans' existence, although far removed from ours, shows their relentless drive to progress and adapt. Their story is a straightforward and unembellished account of survival that laid the groundwork for all that humans have achieved today. As we consider these ancestors, it becomes clear that while their physical form might have been rough, their contributions to human progress were significant. Their daily reality involved navigating a world filled with natural hazards, using their physical strength and the tools at their disposal to hunt, protect themselves, and gather food. This ongoing struggle required not only physical resilience, but also a developing intelligence capable of innovating and adapting to changing conditions. The ability to control fire not only changed their diet by allowing them to cook food, which made nutrients more accessible and consumption safer, but it also created social bonds as they gathered around the fire for warmth and protection. Thanks for exploring the story of our early ancestors with me. Their survival tale raises a question. Are we morally obligated to preserve their simpler ways in our modern society? Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share your thoughts in the comments below.